Ladies and gentlemen, the Pixel Fold is finally out. It's finally on the market, available to be purchased. And today in this video, I'm going to go over some Pixel Fold tips and tricks, ways to get the most out of your Pixel Fold device. And I'm gonna start things off with going over some of the ways to access split screen multitasking, which I think is a pretty big focus on this device. And you may not know all of the different ways, or at least some of the different ways that you can access this. So the first one here from your home screen, your launcher, did you know that you can simply long press on an app and you will get this option up here. You see those two little squares? What this does is it takes you straight into that split screen multitasking. From there, you can simply pick another app that you have in your recents. You can drag one of these up or you can go into your app drawer and grab whatever app you want to use. In this case, we'll just do Twitter and boom, there we go. We now have two apps open at the exact same time. Of course, another way to do this when you have an app already full screen is to use your tab taskbar. You can do a short swipe up to access this taskbar and then from there you can drag another app up just like that. You can also long press it and get that same icon there or you can go into your app drawer and do the exact same sorts of things. And lastly, you can swipe up and hold and see the exact same split screen button right there to jump into a second app. Now something else I want to show you when you are split screening is the fact that your gestures are actually dependent upon what app you're swiping next to. What do I mean by that? Basically, this is what I mean. If I swipe back on this side, I'm going to go back on Twitter because that's the app I'm swiping back on. If I swipe back on this app over on this side, I'm gonna go back on that particular app. Now that may seem like it's an obvious thing, but there are other foldables that do not do this. Now, if we go back to that recent screen, I wanna show you some other cool options that you have. Look down here, screenshot, select, and split screens. Obviously, screenshot allows you to screenshot that open app. Select is also pretty cool. Let's click that, and you can see now that all the text and images have been highlighted. I can then click on one of those, search it with Google Lens, copy it, share it, save it. Lots of really cool options to pull text and images straight out of an application with that. Now, if you wanna change between your recent open apps, maybe you know this, maybe you don't, but you can swipe back and forth along the bottom to change between your open applications. That can also be a very quick, easy way to multitask. When you're customizing your home screen, you can actually do a couple of things that you may not realize. Long press in any open area, go into wallpaper and style, and then scroll down and look for app grid. You can actually change your grid layout in the default launcher for the Pixel Fold. You can see I'm using five by five. You can also change your accent colors here, dark mode themed icons, and this is also a place where you can change your wallpaper. You may notice I have the battery percentage up in the top right hand corner, which is to me just the best way to have that. To get that, swipe down, go into your settings, look for battery there on the left, and you should see battery percentage on the side there. Turn that on to get that percentage up in the top corner. If you click on your search up here and type in now playing, you will see the now playing service, which does need to be enabled. And what this will do when it's turned on is it will actually give you the ability to have your phone listening to any music that's playing around you and it will tell you what that song is. You can even turn on a search button on the lock screen. And of course, you can see the history. These are just the songs we were walking around in Walmart this morning, and these are the songs that I heard while we were in the store. By default, this device will have touch sounds turned on, so whenever you tap something, there will be a little click sound. If you wanna turn that off, you're gonna go into sound and vibrations and scroll down and turn off touch sounds. You can also just go into vibrate or silent mode, and that will have the same effect. You may also notice if I turn this off that I have an always on display enabled. How you do this is by going into display and then lock screen, scroll down and look for always show time and info. You can also find the now playing setting in that area as well. You can also see tap to check phone and lift to check phone also found in this area. Back in display, a way to potentially save some battery if you don't care about this sort of thing is to disable smooth display. What this does is it drops you from 120 hertz down to 60 hertz. You won't be able to see this in this video because this is not filming at 120 FPS, but basically in person, it just makes the scrolling looks uh, quite a bit less smooth. But again, you may save some battery by doing that. In the same place, auto rotate screen. This is a really interesting one because by default, 
auto rotate when folded. So in phone mode, auto rotate is not enabled. So I can turn this and do whatever I want and it's not going to rotate. That's actually really smart. That's how I wanted it to be anyways. But you can customize this. Have it set up however you want to have it set up. No auto rotate, auto rotate on both, whatever it is you want to do. You can find that right there. Here's one that just irritates me on every phone so I always turn it off. If you go into your Google app, and you tap on this icon here and then click on settings. You can then scroll down and look for voice and then voice match and turn off the hey, you know what it says from their detection because what I don't want is my phone responding to that. I have smart speakers in the house and if I want to use the assistant, I'm going to hold the power button and get to it manually. That stuff irritates me, so I always turn that off. Another thing people kind of just overlook as being there is Google Lens. It's right down here in your search bar. All you have to do is click on that, give it permission, and then from there, you can use this to search for almost anything using your camera. So I've got my Z Fold 4 sitting here. We'll move this up here. We're gonna click on that, and it should be able to determine some decent results for that. Very, very useful, and again, gets overlooked all the time. I personally use it to recognize plants a lot, and it does a pretty darn good job of that. You also have this pretty nifty at a glance widget up there. You can see how it's showing the weather right now. If you press on that and hold, you can customize it. And you can actually see how many different things you can have it showing. You can customize this quite well also. Basically, it's going to just track all sorts of different things and tell you what's going on up there in that widget. Maybe you want to turn some of these off. You can do that from here. You may also notice that some applications don't open up and fill the entire screen when you are in tablet mode. Wise is a good example of that. It doesn't actually fill the entire screen. You may also notice that mine is over to the side. That is because you can tap in the blank areas and move it around to make it more comfortable, make it easier for you to be able to reach things. Maybe in this position with you know, two hands, it's harder to reach things. So over here, it's going to be potentially easier. easier. So use that double tap to move those applications around. Another really interesting thing is active apps. If I swipe down, you can see one app is active. And if I click on this, it says, hey, YouTube is running in the background. You can see it there in the widget. And you can stop it from there. That can be a very useful way to just see what your phone is doing in the background and to be able to close that app down. You may not realize that this device can actually do quite a bit to keep you a little bit safer. Let's open up our app drawer and go to the safety app. And there's going to be some stuff you can set up there like emergency sharing. If you go to features, there's car crash detection, emergency SOS, and these things are really cool. So car crash detection, for instance, if I'm in a wreck, it's going to immediately detect that and then send my location to my emergency contact who is my wife. It's also going to let her know if my battery is dying and if I've managed to call 911, which it should also do automatically. With this other stuff here, like the emergency sharing or the safety checks and things like that, let's say, I believe this is the one. So you can say I'm going to be walking alone for an hour. So during that time, my safety contact will be able to see exactly where I am to make sure that I'm safe. Lots of really potentially useful and life-saving stuff in there. There are also some improvements to the keyboard that you might need to manually enable. Let's open up my Edge browser. And you'll see here, if we click on this button here, and then we click on settings, look for voice typing. Click on that and turn on faster voice typing. What that's going to do is it's going to download a more accurate way to recognize your voice. And so that should be quicker than having to do it via the internet. Also make sure that assistant voice typing is turned on because the Google keyboard, the voice typing in this is more advanced than it is on other devices. It should allow you to edit messages, add emojis, and I can show you what I mean here. So let's type in a little bit of stuff. I'm typing with my voice. Delete. Delete. Clear. You can see what I mean there. It does a lot of really, really useful stuff, and you can see what those commands are. I actually need to go back into this again. You can see what those commands are if you click on see voice commands. It'll tell you exactly what's in there. You can do emojis, you can send, you can undo, all sorts of really, really nice stuff going on there. You also have access with this to Google One, you can see right here. And in Google One, you have some backups that you can be doing. 
you can see several things here. You can see your storage backup and it is in progress as you can see here. So it's gonna kind of keep your stuff saved as well as the ability to use their Google One VPN. Simply toggle that and you are now potentially protected from hackers and things like that. If you happen to be on public Wi-Fi, that's a great option to be able to turn on. And you can actually come here, hit this edit button and move the Google One VPN up here to your quick toggles. So I can turn that VPN on just like that. And then when I'm done and everything is safe, I can turn that back off. Potentially very useful as well. And then lastly, let's jump into the camera because there are a few potentially interesting things here. Let's go to video and let's open this up. And you can see there's an option for speech enhancement. And what this is going to do is honestly pretty obvious. It's gonna make your voice more uh, easy to understand if you're in a louder environment with crowds, traffic, noise, things like that. That might be something worth turning on. You may also notice that you cannot do 4K when you're in tablet mode unless you crop it down to 16 by 9 and then you can. However, when you are on the cover display, you're going to want to potentially change this from full HD to 4K, whether it's 30, 60, HDR is there as well. Make sure you've got your settings the way that you want it. And there are also these stabilization modes. This is by default what it's set to, and it is quite stable, but you also have some other options to change the way the stabilization works on this device. So there you go, guys. Hopefully now you are armed with even more knowledge about your Google Pixel Fold and you can use it to its fullest even more easily. Hit that subscribe button before you go so you don't miss out on more content just like this. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.